All righty. Welcome, everyone, to the Black Box and Stockbook webinar. It's a pleasure to have everyone on this afternoon, or if you're joining us from the West, good morning. Uh, we've got uh, a lineup of some special guests today, which we're really excited to introduce. Uh, my name is Tristan Jones. I'm the Chief of Growth for the Black Box Company. So it's a pleasure to have you all on. And I'm really looking forward to quite an informative session. And um, like I say, with some special guests that are going to be able to add some, some personalised flavour to how people get the most out of both of the systems we're going to be talking about today, both very innovative, very user-friendly, and really being able to drive that increased profitability and productivity on farm, which is the goal for all of us within the industry, I believe. Um, so joining us today of the presenters will be Edwina Warby, who is a senior client manager for us at the Black Box Company. We'll also have Rob Powell, who is a stock book consultant. And then finally, We'll have Charlie Perry, who's from Trent Bridge Wagyu. He's been kind enough to set aside five, 10 minutes of his time. I know it's a very busy time of the year for, for Charlie and, and all the Wagyu producers, really. But just wanted to be able to share some real insights on how Charlie is able to utilise both of these systems. And um, just before I hand it over to Charlie, I'll just mention that for everyone that's on here, um, we really appreciate everyone taking the time to jump onto the webinar. And there will be a well, we'll have a special offer that will run through at the end for all of the attendees with a black discounted black box subscription um, as an appreciation for everyone jumping on and separating out some of their time. So we'll run through those details at the end. Um, being conscious of time with Charlie's presentation, we'll go through that next. Um, um, after that, there'll be an opportunity for some questions quite quickly. And what we'll do, if there's any questions that are asked during that presentation that we aren't able to get to, we'll make sure that we record all of them. We'll catch up with Charlie after the presentation later on today or tomorrow, and we'll make sure that all those answers are circulated out to everyone that's on the call. So um, without further ado, Charlie, I'll hand it over to you, and, and thanks again for jumping on. Thanks for the introduction, um, Tristan. So um, as... Um... As Tristan mentioned, I'm a beef producer. I'm based in the New England, New South Wales. We've got uh, about seven or 800 uh, full-blood Wagyu stud cows where we produce bulls um, for predominantly for the F1 market. And we also um, have a similar number of Angus cows where we put our Wagyu bulls over them to produce F1s, which then become uh, feeders into a, into a, into a predominantly the JBS supply chain, but some others. Um, I should probably acknowledge that um, um, uh, Rob and Edwina, they probably haven't had this feedback yet, but they need to work on their work-life balance. I've been known to call Rob at 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning and with a problem with stock book, and he always picks up and he always gets me out of trouble. I sent some data through to um, Edwina late on a Friday night and I saw that it was uploaded immediately. So that's a roundabout way of saying that, you know, if, you, if you're working with these companies, there's obviously... You know, they're just not some faceless tech company. There's people behind it and they're just, you know, if they're representative of their broader organisation, they're just fantastic at supporting. When you do run into some some challenges, which we, when we, as we know with technology can happen from time to time. So I've been a client of Stockbook since maybe 2018 and um, we um, use that for individual live um, crush eye data capture. So every six weeks, we weigh all of our F1 cattle to track their weight. All our young stud animals, we weigh every six weeks to track their performance. All our commercial cows, all their preg test, all, all our stud cows, all their AI results, all their animal health. I have better records on all my cattle than, you know, my own health, for example. And I think Stockbook is a, a fantastic way of using that. The reason I started working um, with Black Box was in maybe eight, eight, two years perhaps ago, um, um, or I guess to take a step back, uh, we have to um, maximise our performance out of our young stock to meet our sort of business model. So what that means is that we sell a couple of hundred yearling bulls a year, but in order to achieve that from weaning, which is normally on the 1st of February till sale, which is in the first week of September, we need those animals doing... 0.8 to 1.2 kilograms a day, um, which is, happens over a New England winter, which can be quite challenging. And if we have a period of lapse there of some of the mob, that can substantially impact our, our capacity to turn off what we need. Similar to that, we join our yearling heifers, our heifers at 15 months. Wagyu's generally have lower growth capacity, so I need them doing 
0.4 to 0.6 a day from weaning to joining. What I found with Stockbook is that it's fantastic at the data capture and there's some reports that it runs, but I was then pulling a lot of this data out into Excel and then reviewing it. And what I wanted, which was something which would could, could provide a great visualisation component to look forward around my projections, compare it to where I was last year, the year before and the year before that to see, oh, you know, I've only done 0.5 at, for the first three weeks, but that's after weaning. But normally I get a good kick along there. And then you can, you know, capture other extreme events like the big wet we had last year or what looks like a big dry this year. So I guess that's a kind of holistic approach of how I use use this. Um, there's there's some so I guess yeah primarily I use it I input data into it probably every six weeks when I weigh all my young stock and then I get a, an amazing sort of forecast about how I'm tracking and if I might need to intervene early to supplementary feed or something like that. Um, another thing that I really like about it is um, I now individually sire verify all of my commercial cattle, but I also obviously the stud animals are. So what I can then get is um, it sort of incorporates the information that you might be getting from breed plan. So say Q108, which is a, or, or who's a better bill, Q38, who um, I use quite a lot of, who's a sire who's come through there. Phenotypically and on breeding values, he looks like he's got a he's got high growth capability. But I can easily just go in and select on that ball, and then Edwin will walk you through this later. It will pick up the entire growth um, performance of that animal of, of that sire. I can compare full bloods versus F one versus F two animals to see how my performance is rating across different breeds. I can compare across different pup farms, across different nutritional um, sort of um, programs. And I think the one thing that I find most attractive about this program is that it's incredibly flexible, so you can just tailor it to what you need. And that's why I think it's a great complement to Stockbook. Stockbook's just the sort of powerhouse collecting all of this data in the background. And then what Black Box does is allow you to interrogate that data to make sort of better better management decisions. Um, another thing that I do use for it is, um, which I get pretty excited about, um, is I use it for um, when I get all my F1 carcass performance back from my supply chain partner, I then input all of that into Stockbook and then I can just fiddle around with that and see if there's any trends there. So, you know, I might look at how are the animals that I end up at 350 kilos performing versus the cattle that I send off at 420 kilos? How does days on feed impact performance? How does the sire impact performance? And um, what we are getting, um, the, the Wagyu Association has introduced something called the Wagyu Feeder Check, which is giving a sort of genomic prediction of, um, of the F1 animal as well as the sire. And then I'll have all of that weight gain information. And then it, it hasn't been... Um, completed yet but what i'll ultimately be able to do is get that wagon feeder check prediction and then marry it up with the carcass results to actually see the the the, the accuracy and the performance there i know that um <laughs> black Box hasn't rolled that out but i just use that as an example of the type of different things that they're um they're working on and um i think that's the thing that i find most interesting is that i can sort of select on any indicator and tr or trait and then look at how that impacts performance. You know, for example, um, you know, anecdotally, animals that are um, the anecdotally in Wagyu um, marble. Sort of example and you know that's just a sort of small example of the the multiple different ways that you can use it um edwina tristan or rob i know that was a very long diatribal spiel but is there anything you feel like i've missed that you'd like me to expand on i don't think so charlie i think that's um really good and as you mentioned rob and i will dive into some of those examples more in depth um <laughs> and how you actually use the dashboards. Uh, but I guess open to the floor, uh, Tristan, if anyone has any 
questions, just pop them in the Q&A. Um, as Trisha mentioned, Charlie's running on a tight schedule and does have to get back to the yard. So um, if any of you have any questions, just feel free to pop them in the Q&A. I apologise. As we all know, best laid plans on trucking bulls off to go out with cows at the moment. And the truck assured me he would be here at 12. And um, it's now looking like, well, New South Wales time. So it looks like he's pulling up in the next couple of minutes. So um, so I apologise. Um, Now that's all good, Charlie. I mean, I haven't seen any questions come through yet, but for anyone that does think of something a little bit later, don't worry. We will make sure that we record and all the questions down that come through over the session and we'll loop back with, with Charlie at another point in time to provide mm. it back to everyone as well as a, a record, full recording of the session as well for all of those attendees. Um, and also just to let you know, you got a brilliant thanks, Charlie, come through on the, on the Q&A as well, mate. So a kudos to that. And really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be able to um, look at a, a real life example of of how a Wagyu producer is digging into both these systems to get the most value out of it. So I really do appreciate it. Good on you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate your time. Um, and, and I think the, the only part in comment I'd make is I found both of these organisations um, tremendously flexible in wanting to try and solve your problem. Like if there's a certain data aspect that you want to get recorded through Stockbook or get interpreted through Black Box, there you guys. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Thank All right, I'm going to pass over to Rob now, who's going to walk us through some of the practical examples that we were kind of touching on um, in Charlie's presentation. So, Rob, I'll hand it over to you, mate. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Tristan. Um, I'll just share my screen here now. Does that come up there? Yep, perfect, Rob. Right. Okay, so Stockbook um, is, as Charlie said, an individual animal management program. So it stores all the data against each animal. Uh, for example, if I look at um, this cow here, I've got her full pedigree on her. I'll flick through this fairly quickly, so any questions later, I can go into more depth uh, even after the uh, webinar with anybody who wants to. Um, it also has her progeny. It records um, joining and pre-test history each year. Uh, it has a complete weight uh, history on the animal as well. And um, DNA sample number um, request and, and the results come back in from there as well. Um, <clears throat> also records all your treatments and products and batch numbers against it. And in doing that, which would be scary, also records the cost of the animal of what you've done, including feed costs there as well. Um, we go to i just go to EBV. So if we look at that, we can send data out uh, to breed plan and bring back the EBVs on that animal. These are well and truly out of date. This is my data set I play around with. Um, but you can run this every every month and update your EBVs in Stockholm. It has um, keeps a note history on them as well. So any notes you put against the animal can be recorded. Um, it also does your sales and purchases. We'll look at that one there. Um, it records all your purchase details and all your uh, sale details, including your vendor deck numbers, uh, purchase price, who bought it, who you sold it to, all that sort of stuff as well. The other thing it, it does, as Charlie was saying, is bringing back all your carcass data. So if I just filter out a couple that have um, got that one, sorry. The carcass data is stored against each animal as well. So that's just imported back in. So um, it does every, every piece of data you want to collect on the animals all there for reporting and analysis later on. The other thing it has is an ET IVF module where you can put all your embryos in here and um, 
you can filter on um, how many animal, how many frozen embryos I have in the tank. So I've got 117 there. Um, it also does all your semen inventory as well. So knowing um, how many straws you've got on hand by each bull, where it's stored, if you bought it, how much you bought it for as well. So that's all recorded as well. So complete profile. The filter, um, oops, the filter is a very powerful tool where you can filter on mobile group, uh, paddock property, society details, their current status, whether they're pregnant or empty. Um, your purchases, animals you purchase from who uh, on a vendor deck or animals have been sold for a price between a certain date range, who bought them, again, vendor decks. Filtering on weights, so if you want to identify the heaviest weaning weights or the last weaning weights or whatever it might be, you can, you can filter them out. Uh, scanning data, so muscle scanning data. Filter on EBVs, um, various traits that you might want to filter on. And carcass data, so looking for animals that might marble score between, for example, eight, let's say 10. We don't have too many in this one, including active. So there's 61 there that fit in that range. So quickly, quickly identifying them, and then I could run a report on them based by um, by sire. So just to show you that one, doing a carcass data of those animals sorted by sire. And if I go to the last page, it tells me my average marble score is eight point six nine. Um, this side here, P698, his average is 8.76. So quickly I can see in here what's what's happening with um, with my size or dams, looking at their performance. The other thing it can do, as Charlie said, um, let's get out of those inactive ones. It can... Um, it can export out to Excel. So selecting the animals, going through the file and uh, export options, you can do a master CSV export and, and drop this in Excel. So you can select what data you want to send out by ticking the boxes. So that's the uh, life data. You can send out weights, treatments, um, preg tests or joining data. And, and dump that all in Excel. The other thing you can also do is <clears throat> send off to um, the break plan. Weights, for example, if I was sending out a weaning weight of these animals got selected and go export, it, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Run through that again. All right. It creates a file that you just email off to bring plan. And there's the data of the animal and it's weighed over here on the right hand side, which is uh, 100, uh, 212 kilos in management group one. So it's as simple as getting that out to send it off. Um, the other thing it, it does, which is very important in the Wagyu industry, of course, is filtering on DNA results. I'll just reset that. So if I filter out all my tissue samples, and I'll go down to these S's again, what I can do, I'll take these ones. I can send off a request form to the lab. So through file, Export options, a DNA test request form. I select the breed of cattle I'm, I'm doing. So I've got Wagyu here set up. I can select the lab that I want to send it to. And then I can select the genomic test that I want to have done. So complete bundle, apply to port to the wall. 
I can also attach a um, list of possible size and of possible, uh, sorry, dams and size. And if I go next, agree to this. I've now got the form plus the size plus the dams. This is not what I send them, it creates a file, a zip file, which I just send off to the association for um, for them to go through. But it, it's quick and simple. Um, and because it's all done electronically, there's no mistakes at all. So that's getting that out of there. Um, the other thing you can also do is send off your calf registration. So again, Sending off, you can say uh, with the herd book uh, registered or to be herd book registered content or slaughter. And again, you just hit the export button that creates a file which we send off to <clears throat> the association for registration. So once the data is collected in Stockbook, it's a really simple process to get this data to where we need it. Um, the other thing about Stockbook, it is um, QA compliant. So um, doing your NLIS um, movements. If you set up your uh, credentials here, if you log in for your NLIS database, you can do property transfers by just typing in or putting in which uh, pick they're coming from and which one they're going to, the date, uh, put in the um, vendor deck number and click upload and you've notified the NLIS database that those animals have changed properties. You can also do a replace tag, which is not those ones. Some of these, I think, will have a replace tag. Replace tags. So these are animals that have lost their tag in the paddock and have been replaced. I can upload that so I've kept my lifetime traceability of those animals on the NLIS database. And particularly important when you're, if you're EU accredited. The other thing in here you can do is a pick reconciliation between the NLIS database and Stockbook. Just by selecting your pick, processing, it won't change anything. It will just give you a uh, error report which you have to work through because it won't assume that the NLIS is right or Stockbook is right. So um, you've got that functionality. You've also got um, in the reports, there are QA reports where you can do um, animal sales. So if I just uh, go back to about 2020, I'm not sure what I've got in this database. And so these are all the animals being sold in, a, in that period. And so it has all their vendor deck, um, their truck rego number, um, transport company, buy everything about it that's needed. So if you get audited, all the data is stored here in one place. It makes it a really simple, simple process. You can go through an audit, whether it be EU, um, LPA, PCAS, NLIS, any of those, all your data is collected into one spot and, and stored here. So um, in the reports, there are various reports in here. Um, we can do weight report, still pick somewhere on these ones, where it brings up all your all your uh, weight history on those animals I got selected. Uh, that's the most recent one, weight there with the average weight, the second last weight and so on. You can do joining uh, fertility reports, joining um, summaries, uh, female breeding history, you've got other reports um, in here, like a full history of the animal. So whatever you want to select about it, which includes um, a, a treatment history of the animal. Um, so there's a whole range of reports in there. You can do a stock reconciliation. So you can do it as at today, tells you what you've got as a summary. Or you can do a year summary where you can go back to, oops, 2023, so 1st of January until today. 
and that gives you a, a summary of your opening stock, your closing stock, your sales, your purchases, your natural increase, and so on. These can be sent out as a PDF and um, and sent directly to your accountant or wherever you need to, to go. Uh, other reports such as trading reports. So this program will handle traders as well. Uh, there's a process involved in that, in getting that data right, but we can do trading reports, projected trading reports, um, projected weight reports. And if you've got cattle in a feed lot, you can do a like pen summary of how many days they've been on feed. They've been a bit long, those ones. Um, you can also do a, i just find the right mob here. Select those and do a report on uh, feedlot performance. And so that gives you your, your um, estimated value of the animal going into a feedlot, how long it was on feed, how much feed did it eat, um, weight gains, conversion rates, and over here, a profit and loss. So this is just a database I play around with, so there's a lot of data missing throughout it, but it gives you an idea of what, um, what it will do if you do it properly. The other part of it um, is the live entry capability. So this is our live entry stream. We can hook up to um, any um, your, all your existing hardware, reader scales. Uh, we can hook up to, a, to an automatic drench gun to deliver the correct dose rate. Um, and we can set these, we can create our own templates, customize our own templates. So in the data entry template, this is what we've got selected. These are all the possible fields we can collect data on. So whether it be DNA, or whether it be implanted embryos, joining data, traits, weights, a whole lot. So we just select what we want to do, put it over here, and it gives us a template. So it's just about a scan the animal, it will come up there, pull that one there. Um, weight would come in automatically. Oh, heavy. We can scan the um, QR code on the bottom of the tissue sample and it will just automatically go into, into that box. We On the first animal, we say it's a tissue sample. Our weight ops code might be a 400 day and what batch number are we doing? And we save that. And um, we just keep going. And from then on, it's just scan the next animal. The weight comes in automatically from the scales. You scan the DNA, it comes in there and it's recorded straight away. So that's as simple as that of getting data into it. Um, paddock movements you put on there as well, so you can actually assign them to a paddock, which I think I've done in this uh, drafting setup here where I'm assigning them to a to a uh, mob and a, a paddock down here as they've been, been drafted off. So, yeah, getting the data in is... In the yard is the most accurate way of doing it um, by using um, EID and scales. Everything done electronically is recording it correctly. Once that's recorded, it's straight back into the into the program, and it's it's stored there for life. So the next step, I guess, is getting this data out to black box. So if I just deselect them, see the filter. We just take these few here. So there's a custom report writer, and Edwina and um, Emma came to me a while back and to find a way of getting this data out quickly and easy for them. So in the uh, custom reports, we'll open here. We've got a. Um, I've written some queries. So for example, um, what we just did uh, yesterday, I think it was was replace tags so we could update black box with that. 
So we can load these these reports onto your computer if you're using Blackbox to be able to get this data from Stockport to Blackbox in a, in a very easy way. So the EID update, there's a query. We can click on result, there's a result. So the animal, it's EID, the date the tag was replaced. So that was the old tag, it was lost, that was a new tag put in. This one here has lost it twice. And then, um, sorry, that was the 68th, uh, that's the most recent one. That tag was then lost and replaced with that one and so on. To get that to black box, we just click on the export uh, results down the bottom and it sends it out into an Excel spreadsheet exactly like that, which we just email off to black box. So that's to replace tag one. We've got the grower report. So again, a much bigger query, um, and there's a result. So we've got now um, the last four weights. So there's weight one in this column down there, uh, weight two in that column, weight three in that column somewhere there, and these ones don't have a fourth weight, but if they had a fourth weight, it would bring that out as well. Uh, so the date the weight was taken, the weight type, and the um, over here we've got the last treatment, and there's more sire, sire society ID, dam, dam society ID, their breed, their class, and the paddock they're in. The other one is a fertility report, and again it is another different query, and there's the <coughs> there's the results of the um, the fertility one. So the join sire, the joining date, join sire, the type of joining, whether it's natural or AI. Let's have two on here, two the last two joinings. And their last treatment is somewhere here as well. I might bring back on the other one, I think. Um, so that's all the data that the black box require. <clears throat> so again, it's just a matter of export them out down the bottom, put it on Excel send it off to them. The other reports we can we can write in here. Um, we we'll just select a different lot, for example. Um, one there. Here's a carcass by sire, which is a different format of doing it to how Blackbox do it. Thanks for all the load. But it's coming up with different color codes for marble score and carcass weight, uh, blue being the best, green, yellow, then red. So you can quickly look through by the sire over here on the left of each of these sections. That's the um, animals killed, the date of birth, their age at, at um, slaughter, days on feeder was there, and their marble score and carcass weight and the average of each each side along there. So we can customize any any report you want. Uh, we do sale catalogs in here. We do all sorts of um, reports for clients just by writing the query. Um, and then once that's done, that belongs to the client. So they've got that information at their fingertips. So between that and also what black box are doing, it gives you a pretty powerful tool in analysing the data that you um, that you've collected. But I think the big thing is having Stockbook as the storage facility that every piece of information is is stored against that animal. It's all in one place. It's easy to get to. Um, you're not looking on your scales to try and find some or an Excel or any notebook. It's all in one place. So it's a very really, really simple way of getting getting um, your data together. That was excellent, Rob. Um, I think to quote Charlie as well, it's an absolute powerhouse of a platform there. And it did look incredibly efficient when you're looking at putting the information in um, live from a crush site as well. And that's a, a key not to slow those operations down. And it was absolutely seamless. Um, and then also helping automate those transfers and NLIS transfers and those kind of things um, is pretty critical. Taking the pain out of paperwork um, is exceptional. So. 
That was really impressive, Rob. So thank you so much for that presentation, mate. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I will um, pass it over to Edwina now, who's going to touch on black box. For those who don't know what black box is, we'll give a quick overview um, and then get stuck into those visualisations that Charlie was talking about on how he looks to analyse his information back to Sire and those kind of things. So I'll hand over to you, Edwina. Thanks, Tristan, and thanks, everyone, for jumping on um, today. I apologise in advance if we have any internet delays. I'm usually based down in southern New South Wales, but dealing with uh, Queensland internet at the moment. So we'll dive into it. But um, as Charlie mentioned, Blackbox is a cloud-based platform that pulls together data from multiple different sources and turns it into visual interactive dashboards and insights. So we pull in the data from the current data collection systems that are already being used within your business. Um, so Rob's just shown us a good example of how that stock book data uh, for the growing and fertility um, side of things comes across. And then we also pull in the raw data from the feedlots and the processes. So this enables you to visualize key metrics to gain insights into crucial performance indicators like growth rates, carcass performance, and easily compare performance across different groups or classes of animals. You can then extract actionable insights and push information or draft lists, so keep and cull um, lists back down to Stockbook so that you can act on that information. So uh, in the past 12 months, we've also worked really closely with the feedlots to build out a feedback system that enables them to provide feedback data back to their suppliers. And you would have heard Charlie touch on that. But the value of black box is really in your aggregated historical data from those multiple sources and the process of us standardizing that data to make it much easier for you to bring together and actually drive insight within your operation. So uh, I'll just touch on, um, I guess today I'm going to focus on three particular examples that we see a lot of our stock book clients using black box for. So comparing weight gain and carcass performance between different size properties and breeds, predicting turnoff weights, and then creating those draft lists to send back to Stockbook um, based on either predicted or actual performance values. And then of course, tying that feedlot and carcass feedback data back to the animal's genetics to help you make better decisions. So I'll just um, share my screen. I am going to start off with, um, Tristan, you can see that dashboard okay there? Yeah, that's coming through nice and clear, Adriana. Yeah, cool. So we'll uh, start on a growing example. Um, and this particular example, we um, are going to show you through an example of just looking at predicting uh, sale and turnoff weights for some male F1 steers. Um, so whether they're planning with their feedlot buyers on um, droughties or Brahmins or uh, Wagyu steers that they're trying to feed off into the market, um, proving a little bit difficult to find some space at the moment. So the benefit of Black Fox is you can come in here, um, let's just choose the steers only. Uh, you'll notice that Charlie spoke about comparing, say, different breeding properties or looking at one or multiple properties at a time. So you can easily filter by that data. Uh, the other thing you can do is select on certain weight ranges uh, really quite easily. So let's look at weaning weights, for example. Um, but in this particular example, I'm just going to select these Wagyu Angus steers um, that this particular client was planning with their feedlot by the other day when they might be ready to sell. Uh, and you'll see that he's got some OptiWay data coming through here telling him that they're doing a kilo a day. So he can come down to this predicted weights table and see that just his F1 steers, he can see what he's got in each weight category. And then from that ADG, he can say, okay, well, if they're doing a kilo a day um, now, he's feeding them some pellets because it's dried off a bit. Um, you can change that scenario and see when those animals might be ready to go. So, for instance, if you're aiming for that 480, 500 mark um, with the Wagyu's, it might be a bit lighter. But so you can see when you'll have those animals ready to go in each month. Same thing if you're planning different scenarios and say it's going to rain, which we're all hoping you can up that or you can say, OK, it's dried off, um, backed off a bit. So you, it's just as easy as adjusting that ADG. The other example that we're seeing used quite commonly is that uh, Neogen DNA data that we're pulling directly in. So uh, clients may be creating draft and keep and cull lists uh, back to the crush side. 
So for instance, um, they might just want to select those predicted lower marbling animals uh, and add them to their list builder. And you'll see here that it's blurred out just for confidentiality um, demo reasons. But usually the benefit of just creating that list of EIDs, they'll pop up here. You can export them to Excel and send them back to any crush side system that you're using to then create that draft list. So whenever that animal's coming through, you say they're predicted to perform a little bit lower than these other animals. Let's pull them out or send them to a different market. So that's based um, purely around the DNA data. The third most and probably our most popular feature, um, as I mentioned, getting that feedback data back to producers from the feedlots. So we have a feedlot feedback dashboard that combines the feedlot and carcass data um, for that supplier. So they've sold the feeder steers on and then they just want some data to obviously feed back into their management and genetic decisions so um, this dashboard is a combination, like I said, of the data um, of their time in the feedlot along with the end carcass result. So you'll see that there's multiple charts on here um, and you can select by any traits that you're focusing on. So uh, we usually see our start or commercial guys, um, you know, that are sending a few steers to the feedlot, select those lower performing marbling animals and maybe a combination of those lower carcass weights as well. So um, we've just got four animals there. We can add those to the list builder. Again, EID is hidden for confidentiality reasons, um, but we can pull that across back to their growing dashboards and filter by just those four animals only. And you'll see that that tells you exactly, okay, uh, one of them was this sire, two belonged to this sire. Um, they were bred on this property, things like that. So you can kind of see their whole of life growing data. Um, you'll see here that we had a few missing carcass values just for this demo example. So although it's not far off that, um, it's realistically a little bit higher. So I guess, Tristan, that's a really uh, quick summary of the main points where we see our clients using that whole of supply chain uh, data to then drive back to their genetic and management decisions. But feel free to jump in or if there's any questions. I haven't had any questions come through the chat, mate. Um, I would probably just mention that for everyone, there is an incredible lot of um, capability within the platform and there are other dashboards beyond what we looked at today, which look at fertility um, and other areas of your business that you might look at um, trying to optimise. But we wanted to really focus on those ones that Charlie mentioned at the start that were pretty key to how he was finding some real um, upside to his business by utilising Stockbook and Blackbox together. So focusing on those, but if there are others, um, there will obviously be a link that comes around after this call. We can schedule a time and run through a demonstration of some of the other capabilities. If there's other key metrics in your business that you're really looking to focus on, um, we can definitely dig into those and, and work through what the capabilities are of our platform. Um, but that was a really good presentation. Thank you, Edwina. Looking forward to, you know, kind of any other, any questions that might come through, please feel free to send them mm -hmm. now. Um, if not, we are running just about at time. So I thank everyone that's been able to jump on for the 45 minutes. It's been really quite insightful and I hope everyone else got a lot out of it. As I mentioned at the start of the call, for all of those that have taken the time, um, we really do appreciate those that have jumped on the webinar. So for new uh, people who want to sign up with Black Box and start to take advantage of the the value that you know, Charlie's getting out of here and lots of other producers around Australia are getting, the, we're going to have a, a, a special program for, for those people that will have access to Black Box tailored to their own situation. Um, we're going to be offering 20% off for those that have come on board um, on the back of registering and joining our webinar today. So I really want to make sure that we're rewarding those people for taking the time out to come and learn what Blackbox is all about. There's not been a better time to jump on and get value out of the platform. Um, and it's never been, you know, priced as, as effectively. So there's all of our contact details are there. There will be an email out of the recording after this presentation. And it'll also have a copy of the slide deck as well. So you can do that. We'll also click, keep a link in the email that goes out that allows you to book a demo seamlessly or just give either myself or Edwina a call. We're happy to run you through and, and work out a time that's going to fit both of us um, to schedule in a demo for you and take from there. But really looking forward to working with a lot of the people that joined on the call. We've got great attendance today. So I'm really happy for everyone to jump on. 
And I said there was a question around, are you happy for this recording to be shared with others in our organisation? Um, so, yeah, if, if you're representative of a larger company and that kind of thing, this this information that we've kind of gone through today um, isn't confidential in a, in a sense. And so more than happy for this to be you know, kind of shared around. There's a lot of value to get out of Stockbook and Black Box um, separately, but also the most value of them together, I think. So happy for that to go out to a broader audience. And I'm sure you are as well, Rob. Yes, certainly. Tristan, yeah. I haven't had any other questions. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, important. Uh, so I might, if you see that one there, Edwina, just talking about the import, can't import black box data by the sounds of it into Stockbook unless you sign up to a paid subscription for black box. Yeah, so thanks for that question. I guess the way that it works is uh, we pull the data across from Stockbook. So if you're interested in getting value out of that data that you're collecting in Stockbook, it would require for you to have a subscription uh, with black box. Yeah, and happy to chat chat to you about what that might look like for your operation as well. Alrighty, that looks like I'll just give it another 30 seconds just in case there's any other questions coming through. Right, it looks like that's the end of the questions. Um, as I said to everyone, there will be a, an email that goes out with a recording of this. Um, thank you again to the presenters, obviously Charlie who had to duck away, Edwina and Rob as well. Thank you so much for going through that, that detailed look into the powerhouse system that is Stockbook. Um, hopefully everything got a lot out of um, Edwina's presentation on the insights. You can start to draw out of black box, start making those data-driven decisions on farm or having confidence in the management decisions you're making when it's backed by data as well. I think that's really where we're moving to as part of an industry, which is a pretty exciting time for us all. Um, and obviously 